Gentlemen, thank you very much for speaking with CNBC TV 18. Theory, the first question is, this Q1 guidance, minus 3 to minus 1%, has taken everyone by surprise. Can you walk us through what's going wrong? Yeah, well, you know, Rima, no, nothing is going wrong. I think, you know, we are, we have been uh, uh, just closing the year uh, FY23 with 11.5% of growth. We've had two years of, you know, very solid growth. We've delivered our uh, guidance for the quarter another time. Uh, as we are looking at, you know, uh, Q1 uh, 24, you know, with, we just end a very strong quarter in terms of bookings. One of the record year, uh, record quarter in terms of bookings with 4.1 and 4.2 billion dollar over the last two quarters, which is a significant increase over the previous quarters. So the volume of business uh, uh, that we are seeing is good. We do not see a pattern of slowdown in decision process from clients. We are winning deals. And so from that standpoint, you know, we are very uh, uh, we are positive about the market and about you know, our ability to continue to win in this market. In a, besides this, we know, and this is not new also, we've said it uh, uh, in January, there are general uncertainty in, 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 the, in, the, in, in the economy. In some sectors, in some industries, certainly the banking, financial services, also the technology sector, where what we're observing is that there is a certain reduction, slowdown of the you know, discretionary spend. And that is uh, you know, definitely uh, uh, generating a little more of uncertainty on our top line uh, for, for quarter one. Uh, Thierry, did any of your projects get cancelled in Q4? No, uh, Rima, not one single project or got cancelled, not a single project, uh, you know, there's n I, I would say there is not one, one event that would have any material importance to, uh, the, to the guidance for Q1. Uh, we are actually, uh, uh, you know, progressing very well on our journey to continue to reinforce our position as a strategic partner uh, of our clients in their transformation. And so from that standpoint, you know, the strategy we had defined uh, uh, three years ago is paying off and, uh, and, and we continue to grow those accounts. Uh, so no project is cancelled, but are any projects facing some slowdown in ramp up? Have the ramp ups been delayed? Uh, and secondly, despite seeing very strong deal wins over the last couple of quarters, it's not translating into revenue growth. Again, you know, a negative, a contraction in growth uh, for Q1. Yeah, Rima, so on the first point, uh, um, we haven't seen any uh, cancellation of uh, uh, deals. We haven't seen any uh, delay in the ramp up. What we are seeing is you know, some of the uh, deals, discretionary spend, if you like, is being either slowed down or spread. And so we are seeing a, a reduction of this uh, discretionary spend in, in, in our accounts. Um, on the second point, you're absolutely right. We have had a very solid performance on deals. We won more large deals than, you know, ever. The performance on large deals this year overall has been really encouraging and really positive. The performance this quarter is very solid, and it's solid across the board. It is solid in America, it is solid in Europe, it is solid in Asia Pac. That's what gives us you know, confidence for the, for, the, for the foreseeable future. As we are looking at Q1, we know that this performance is somewhat definitely impacted by those reductions in discretionary spend. Got that. Uh, Jatin, you've defended margins in Q4, uh, but your aspirational margin range is 17%. When do you think you can get to it? Is it possible to get to it in any quarter of FI24? Uh, thank you, Rima. We, we had a strong execution in quarter four. Uh, we, we saw some increase in our travel spend, which was, which was quite normal, given the business activity and the deals that, that we pursued. 
Uh, we had a very nice improvement in utilization of 1.7 percentage points, which uh, helped us offset this uh, impact of a higher travel cost. So, overall we were able to deliver uh, flat 16.3 percent margin. Now, as I look at next, uh, uh, next couple of quarters, as you can imagine, uh, our priority is really uh, revenues and, and how do we convert the deal wins into revenues, how we get to a strong growth trajectory, steady state growth, uh, growth trajectory back. And hence, our commentary is that we will try and maintain margins around the range that we have delivered in recent quarters. Okay, so you are focusing on revenues and your aim is to maintain margins. Saurabh, in the last couple of months, we've had multiple media reports which suggest that the company has delayed onboarding. The fresher salary has been brought down quite substantially compared to what uh, they were earlier promised. Uh, there have been, uh, you know, they've been asked to take multiple tests and even then they've been, uh, the freshers have not been onboarded at, at the earlier timeline or at the committed timeline. Uh, can you tell us what is happening? Have you really brought down fresher salaries and has there been any delay in onboarding and what is your guidance on hiring for next year? Srima, yeah, I must clarify, you know, <clears throat> first of all, let me start by saying that in FI23, we have onboarded the highest number of freshers ever in our history. We've onboarded more than 22,000 people. That's one. Second, we have not reduce anybody's salary. We had spent time in investing in people who were fresher than trained them. And at that point of time, we gave a choice to these freshers that those jobs were not available open immediately, but there are certain other jobs which are open immediately right now at a lower salary. And the choice is yours. You can continue with your existing offer and wait till we onboard you, or you can choose to come and join us at this role which is required now. And you'll be surprised that 92% of the people chose to join immediately. So I don't think so. It's a wrong interpretation that we have reduced reduce anybody's salary. Today, even today, there's a bunch of people who have chosen to stay back with the original offer and we are waiting whenever the onboarding happens. That's the second thing. The third is, yes, we have onboard, we are continuously onboarding people. Every quarter of this year, we have onboarded people. Yes, when we went to the engineering schools one and a half years back, the demand environment was very different. Hence, the onboarding is staggered, and we have told them that Wipro will honor every offer we have made. It's a commitment. It will be done in a phased manner, depending on business needs. That's how we have been approaching this. So it's been a very fair and a transparent process in terms of dealing, because they are so critical for us in our growth strategy. Do you want to add? Yeah, I just want to add that, you know, indeed, uh, as a company, uh, NextGen Associates, the new name uh, for freshers in organization, are absolutely essential to our strategy. We want to invest in them, and we will continue. So it is uh, not a, you know, one action. It is absolutely central to our strategy. Second, we've taken very personally the fact that, you know, we want to be straightforward, direct, and transparent in our communication with uh, those next-gen associates. As Sorab said it, uh, we have offered options, and they could choose both options. They had to choose, and I think it was actually quite a, you know, a, a, a interesting opportunity for them to either stay with the offer that we had uh, put up first or consider the second one and they have made this choice. So actually I believe that we've, we, we, we have honored our commitment and uh, you know, we are also investing in training them to make sure that you know, they, are, they, are, they are learning about technology, they are learning about you know, some of the capabilities they want to acquire for the future. Gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for joining and clarifying that. Thank you.